Hey, welcome to my show and tell. You've all been waiting for this. I've got quite a few items to show you today. The first thing I'm going to do is a trial lens set. Now, you'll be able to hear it before you see it. So we've got all the trial lenses across here. As you can tell by the sound of them, there's a lot of lenses. So we have here, starting with the spherical lenses, um, we've got a minus 025 and all the way up to minus 20. And you can see the difference it makes having a minus 20 compared to having a minus 025. And again, this time with the plus lenses. So with a plus 025, and again, you can see that this magnifies a little bit. But then when you get a plus 20, there's a lot of magnifying. I'm showing you some cross sills. Now this is an 025 cross sill. But you'll notice how the image changes. It's not so noticeable on this the smaller power, but you can see the image changes as I turn the dial, as I turn it round. Now when we look at a minus six sill, suddenly you can see a big change in the way the vision is showing. And then I'll show you now with the plus sills as well. So again, the low powered plus sill. This time it's magnifying, but in one direction, followed by a minus six. And again, you can see how the image changes as I turn it. Now I've got some prisms to show you and what you'll notice with this is it changes the direction of the image. So as I go this way, go around, the image appears to be in a different position. And now I'm showing you with 10 prisms so that also this will change it a lot. And I'm just going to show you a few extras, but I'll give you a bit of silence with these. This one is the pinhole. And 
the slit. Finally, the occluder. the last item that I carry in this trial set, apart from a trial frame. Now I have a really simple device. This is a back vertex measure and you'll notice it's numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. And what this does, this measures one surface of the lens. So this particular lens that I've got here now is a minus four sphere. And if I put this on the front surface, because that's where the measurement would go, what I'm looking for is to see the best fit on the lens on that surface. So in fact, this is actually quite a good lens. It's a plus two front surface. That means the back to make it into plus four is a minus six. This time, Got a plus two two five lens. And check the front surface of this. Now that's a plus five on the front surface. So to make that into a plus two two five. It needs minus 225 on the back surface. So that shows you how that simple disc works. My next instrument, I've got two of these, and these are for checking the center thickness or the edge thickness of the lens. You will notice, although they're very similar, they are very slightly different. So this one has got quite a narrow base. And to work it, you would literally push that. And as it comes back against the lens, it will stop up there and it will show you the thickness. This works in exactly the same way. So if I pick up one of these lenses again, and now this is a minus lens, so actually the thickness, the thickest part of the lens would be the outside edge. But we can see on here, as I measure that now, that will give me the, the centre thickness, which is 1.6 millimetres thick. So you can see we're not talking much thickness. But if I go to the edge of this lens now, and that's now gone to... five millimetres thickness. So as we go on to this plus lens that I've got, now this lens is, the thickness is in the centre. I'm going to use the wider nozzle one because there's less chance of movement. So the centre thickness on this now is 3.4 millimetres thick but if I go to the edge it 
the edges are 1.2 millimeters thick. So both centre thickness gauges will work in exactly the same way. Let's move away from optical and I'll show you this. If you're not really sure what this gadget is, if I show you, it's for checking reflexes. So it's a reflex hammer. I said I was moving away slightly just for a little while from the from the optical so this time I want to look at the ology and so I've got here now um, otoscope you can tell it's a while since I've used this I'll put that on upside down so it means that now I can actually view wherever I want to look. I've got the light shining on the mirror. So I've also got the otoscope. So now I would put a cap on there or I could just sterilize that and I would look inside somebody's ear I've got a nice bright light and you can see that that shines that's shining onto my hand that would be placed in the ear and then the, the audiologist would be looking down to see And you're using one mirror there are, there are actually different size mirrors so now I'll show you with a smaller mirror so that will direct the light a little bit more carefully So you also have a flat plate as well to help you with your observations. When it comes to spectacle dispensing, if you take your glasses off, you can't really see the frames that you're trying to choose. So we have some special 
um, frames, framelets that you put behind the glasses and that should help you. You're trying on a frame that you can't see out of. So that would help you to see. This one's a plus six. So of course I'm seeing worse because I've got my prescription on anyway now. This one is a plus four. Although I can see myself a little bit better with that than I could with the other. This next one is a minus two. So you imagine if you've got no glasses on and you're trying to find an ophthalmic frame for yourself, a new pair of glasses, these would just help you a little bit. They are plastic. Um, the lenses are plastic as well. But they're just a spherical prescription. You know, it just gives you that little bit of better vision. Now I've got a very special ophthalmoscope. It's a battery operated instrument. And it has dial on the back which is with with and without the red filter I've got a dial on the side and this helps with the power I now have a special instrument. This is an ophthalmoscope and it looks rather an unusual instrument. What I've got here is if I turn the power on, you can see there's a light shining at the back there. And what I would do on this front, there is a dial and it has the different powers. So I would look through this, looking into the eye. If I set it at naught because of where I'm sitting. And now I've got a clear view. We've got a dial at the back, which that's a kind of red filter. So there's no red light. And then we've got it with the M, which is the normal setting. As I undo this dial, that allows me to take the top off and I now have access to the bulb. I 
instrument is made by Clement Clark. Sometimes we need a very good torch. Now the torch can be used for a lot of reasons. Sometimes it's just to help us to measure up for a bifocal or a varifocal, especially if they're sunglasses that they're trying on. So you can have a nice wide light, you can have it as a very narrow light. You could also have it as a flashing light. And again, that can be wide or narrow beam. Also good if you're out and about. It's a good, it's a good item, a good item, to help you to get round in somewhere that's very dark. My next instrument is a fixation target. You've got a nice large red one, or you've got a small red target, and it's literally it's. Um, it helps during an eye examination. So it's look, follow the target. Look, to your left, down, central, And that helps to see how good your field of vision is. Next I have something, a very simple name for these are paddles. So I've got three different paddles. The first one is a plus and minus of 50. So as it stands now, as I put that in front, that magnifies, and if I turn it over, and that minifies. This is very good when checking the vision with somebody who's got their glasses on to see if it can be improved. So you've got the O50. Next paddle is 075, so again you'll see that that slightly magnifies it. Twist the paddle, now that minifies it. And you can see the writing across the middle of the paddles that shows you what power it is. And the last paddle is the plus and minus one. So again, the plus paddle to magnify, switch it across, now you've got the minus paddle to minify. Each paddle is only one prescription different, but it's amazing how much difference that can actually make. When you have um, visual difficulties. It's not always about getting the glasses to make it right. Here I have. Stop that again. Right. When you do have visual difficulties, it's not always about um, correcting the vision. It's making things easier for the person who's got the sight difficulties. So here I have what's called the short cane. It's a white stick. You can see that's the full length of it. And actually the correct way to carry this, you would 
have your hand through the loop and you would hold this against your chest and that's how you would carry this and I'm just showing you there there's two different places that you can hold it so you would walk with that across your chest that's enough to tell anybody that you've got a visual sight impairment and when you fold it up that makes it easy to carry because you don't need to take the cane with you everywhere you go and the actual strap holds it together another item visually impaired would use this is called a bus hailer. So on the back, nice bright fluorescent yellow with bus on it. So you can hold that up to tell them that you want the bus. If you know what number bus you want, then let's just say, for example, you want the X11. So you would be turning it across, there's the X. And so you would hold that up for the bus. The bus driver would know to stop for you. And they would also know that you've got a visual impairment. So it would actually be a little bit more lenient with you and help you out when you get on the bus and they won't set off until you've actually sat down. It also has a braille card on it so that you, although you can't see it all them dots and dashes and everything else all the dots on there will spell out the, the alphabet and numbers. You may well be aware as well, there are different types of rulers in the optical business that do, some of them do little differences on the jobs. So I've just got a small selection here. The very first one is an occluder. We do have the numbers across here, so we can measure mono PDs with that. That isn't actually um, a bad ruler for measuring complete pupil distance measurements. This next one has an occluder. It also has duochrome, so it can tell whether you've got the right amount of plus or minus by measuring with what color is the most prominent. I have a ruler here, very simple. It has mono PD measurements. So you put that on the nose and look at an object and you, we can then see what the pupil distance is coming from the center of the pupil to the nose. And then we look on the other side and do the same. If we wanted binocular, didn't need to do the monocular. We just put it that way up and we centre that onto the pupil and then see where it sits against the other pupil. My next PD ruler is very flexible. Again, it has um, a section so you can do mono PDs, mono pupil distance measurements, but it also tells us what the drop is on the nose. Put that on and I'll be able to tell what drop it's got to be rested on the nose, see what the pupil measurement is. And again, I can put it on 
that way and measure binocular pupil measurements. Now this particular ruler is slightly different and this one we can measure up to the radius of the bridge. We can see the mono PDs by putting across here but more importantly if you put it that way we can do binocular pupil distance measurements so that one has a slightly different use to the others and this one although it looks different to the first one very very similar in respect you can measure mono PDs and you can measure binocular pupil distances as well I have here two little key rings and these are little screwdrivers so we've got the most basic of all so that's got the chain on the end you screw the top off and you've got a flat-headed screwdriver The next one to show you is a, a little bit better. This is the deluxe version of a screwdriver on a key ring. And the first thing I'll do before I take the top off, I'll show you that it's actually got two heads. So it's actually got two times, two places to unscrew it. So I unscrew the first one, and what I've got there is a Phillips all cross head screwdriver. Make sure I put that back on. Now I unscrew the other side and this time I've got a flat headed screwdriver. So those are the sort that you would actually purchase and use. Now I've got here two different magnifiers, both of them are two times magnification, but the difference is that this one is a glass lens and it's not illuminated, the other one is illuminated, so this would actually help to light up your page, whereas this one, where is the glass one? be a magnifier you can see that it does magnify it quite well it's two times magnification this one is also two times the magnification but this time it's illuminated it so if there isn't very good lighting you'll find that this one will help you more and now as I'm on to this there are different variations on the near vision chart. So you'll see that this one starts with an N6 at the top. And on this page, it goes down to N12. And if I turn it round, it's N14 to N24. So the bigger print if you've not got such good eyesight. So that's just a single sheet near vision chart. I also have a reading test type. This one's made by Keeler. And if I open up the first page, we've got on here N5, N6 and N8. So they're quite small writing. If you've got reasonable eyesight, you can usually read all of them. As I flip the page over, we've got N10. And then we've got River Oarsman's view, that one in the middle. And then we've got N12 at the bottom. As I go onto the next page, we've got N14 all the way up to N24. And then the final page, we have N36 and N48. In some cases, that's all people can read. So we have to have the different sizes of print.
for that reason. My next item to show and tell is a very focal stroke bifocal height measure. So this goes onto your spectacles. When you put the glasses on and you turn the dial until you get it for a very focal so it's level that red top red line is level with your pupil and then when you, the glasses are taken off you can then read it and that would tell me that this was and this is where this magnifier comes in because I haven't got my glasses on so So that's reading at 22 heights. If it was for a bifocal, instead of measuring it level with my pupils, I would bring it down so it's level with my bottom lids. And that would now read fifteen heights. But that's a simple way of taking the measurements for the heights on multifocal lenses. It's neatly boxed. the chart and this is to measure um, the any distortion in with your eyes so you would put your reading glasses on and hold this at reading distance and check to see if covering one eye is there any distortion can you see all the box etc etc check do the same measurements with the other eye there is also a contrast test now the contrast test, this has different shapes by each number and the, the aim is that again you would be looking at that and, to, and mentioning what, so I would say right number one I've got a triangle, number two is a square, three is a plus sign, four is a love heart, five is a circle uh, and in this lighting I started to get a little bit more difficult, but that's how it works. We do have a lot of people who don't like wearing glasses, and so contact lenses are an option for them. So these are one day lenses, and they come in a strip, they're in strips of five. You get all sorts of different powers, toric etc etc they come in a bubble pack and to try a contact lens to put a contact lens in i'm not going to put this one in but you would peel it back and you would take the lens out it's very very slim very fine it goes on to your right if you the correct way to put it in when you look at it it should be a bowl shape if you looks like it's got lips on it that's we call that saucer so it's cup or saucer shape and it needs to be the cup shape um, when you put it onto your eye it, it takes a little bit of practice once you've got used to it it's very very easy to do and when you've got used to it you can have the lens put it in seconds Next I have, as I mentioned before, I've got um, 
a measuring jug. And this is instead of correcting your vision, this is helping you to live with that correction. So the jug actually talks to you. You can remove the jug so it's easy to clean because uh, you don't want to get the mechanism into the water. And how it works, uh, the more you put in, you press whether you want it for um, dry ingredients or uh, liquid, and it will tell you, it'll actually tell you how much is in there. My next item is tuning forks. Now, all the tuning forks are numbered. So this one is 2048C, and that so you can hear the different sounds. The bigger the tuning fork, the lower the tune, the lower the tune. So this next one is 102.4, and again, the C. The next one I hear, I'm now going on to some bigger ones. So this next one, is the 512C. And I can already hear now that's starting to get quite high, quite low pitched. The next one we have, you'll notice this has got the shapes on the end. This particular one is 256C. And then we've got the lowest of all the pitches. This particular one is the 128C. If you was having a hearing test you would probably hear some of these, but not all of them. My next item, quite a unique item. These are called TV spectacles. They're designed for long distance and they look a bit like binoculars in that respect. But you put them on and you've got dials on the side so you can adjust them so i've now just adjusted this and i've actually brought it into focus on the tv screen on the on the video as i do this now it's just starting to go out of focus now it's very blurred so it's showing you that you can focus depending on where your tv is you can bring it in or out of focus. Usually it's people with very poor sight that would use this. But it does help even if you've got reasonable vision. And I'm just finishing off now with a Ferrocta head. We go to a lot of modern opticians and how and they have they do your eye test with one of these and i've purposely not got this on a stand i'm not going to really use it much but it does all the different types of vision checks You can see it even changes the angle of the head. You 
can also flip the lenses. Last but not least, I've got a couple of fun glasses. They could be glazed, although they wouldn't normally be glazed. You can have your pina colada, tequila. Or if you want to be a rock star. I want to be a rock star.